tell us a little bit more about what this device is and what it can do. Yeah, so, so the, the brick is a modem, it's a router, it's a battery all in one that allows up to 20 devices to connect to the internet at the same time. Yeah. And so we designed and engineered this all here in Nairobi. Yeah. And the idea was, it came, it stemmed actually from a conversation four years ago mm -hmm. where we started thinking, why is it that we're using the technology designed in Europe and the US when we live in Africa? Yeah. The, the infrastructure is not the same, mm -hmm. therefore we should have consumer electronics that is supported uh, by the actual reality of what is on the ground here. Mm -hmm. And so um, about two years ago, uh, mm -hmm. we rolled out uh, Brick as a for-profit company uh, and we have you know, designed and engineered the device, we've shipped it now to 54 countries around the world, mm -hmm. and we have uh, major business units now focused on education, another one focused on small and medium-sized enterprises, and uh, we're starting to see that you can design, engineer, and build consumer electronics in Kenya and, and ship it to the rest of the world. Interesting. Can I have a look at it? Of course, it looks like the typical brick, in fact, even the size. Yeah, people always ask me, is that, does the BRCK, is that an acronym? Yeah. And I, uh, I tell them, no, it's just shaped like a brick, and, I mm -hmm. and there's too many masonry companies, so I couldn't buy the URL, BRICK.com, mm -hmm. so we just dropped the I. Uh -huh. So tell me, now that um, this product is actually assembled here in Kenya, who are the local partners you work with in the ICT space? Because one of the key areas of growth has been how can we tap into ICT and at the same time deliver jobs to young people? Yeah, so that's a good question. Actually, we don't assemble here yet. Yeah. We assemble some of our stuff here, but we yeah. don't assemble the full brick here yet. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the big problems that, there, that we have in Kenya, which is that there's legacy laws that, uh, that hurt us that hurt all of anybody who's trying to do consumer electronics. Basically, there's old laws, 30, 40 years old, that don't allow you to import components without accruing a 20% duty, mm -hmm. even things that you can't make here. And so it's cheaper. I get zero, I'm zero even rated. Even things you can't make here? No, even things you can't make here. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can import the brick fully assembled uh, at uh, zero duty. But if I import the components to build it here and create jobs, then I accrue a 20% increase in duty and it, it doesn't make sense on the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the big issues that, you know, and I have to give credit where it's due, the, um, you know, the government of Kenya, we've been in discussions with them, and, I, and they're taking it very seriously, trying to think of ways where we can um, kind of move forward and create this real consumer electronics industry, uh, make it a hub for the region, not just Nairobi, not just Kenya, but make it a hub for the whole region so that uh, there's a lot more jobs, and it creates a new industry where one hasn't really existed here to date. Yeah. How soon are we likely to see the government making an announcement towards that end? Well, you know, I th it's, well, are you it's, it's, always, it's always hard to say that, right, because it's government. <laughs> now that we have a CS yeah. who totally has an ICT background. You know, I would hope, uh, yeah, we're very excited Joe that, that um, the new CS uh, for ICT is uh, Joe Mushero, mm -hmm. uh, somebody who really understands the tech industry as a whole, yeah. um, and who has a, a great track record, a very uh, honest and um, a guy with a great amount of integrity. Um, because there's going to be some hard roads uh, to go down. Mm -hmm. uh, because who is it that actually decides if there's customs duties? It's not the ICT yeah. uh, ministry. Yeah. It, it falls under the, uh, the, the KRA, yeah. and therefore it falls under uh, the CS for Treasury. Um, for Treasury. Yeah. And, and that means that there's a whole other you know, maneuvering that has to happen. Correct. And people in the government have to start thinking long term. Mm -hmm. It's not about short term, how much can we get taxed today for components that somebody brings in, but yeah. okay, so let's say we zero rate this kind of components, allow mobile phones to be made, tablets to be made, yeah. uh, brick devices to be made. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean for jobs? What does that mean for long term revenue? So we'll see a much bigger increase in revenues mm -hmm. in four years if we, if we sit back and change the rules today. Interesting. And um, let's talk more about the funding that you recently got of about 300 million. Um, what's it going to go into? Yeah, so we're very excited about the, the funding that we just received. Uh, you know, it's, it's more expensive to do a hardware technology startup than it is a software technology startup alone. Sure. Uh, so a lot of our money goes into growing our business units around education and small and medium-sized businesses, uh, distribution, uh, supply chain management. We have to do a lot of inventory uh, management as well to, to build things. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I think there's, uh, there's a huge amount of opportunity, not just in Kenya, but throughout the region. So you'll start seeing a scale 
uh, some of our, uh, our, our education solutions, es especially this year. Yeah. Um, we're already starting in Tanzania. We're looking in Ethiopia mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and probably further south, so down into southern Africa a little bit more. If you had to look at the bigger picture, what will be the impact of this, not only in Kenya but also in the region? Yeah, so you know, I guess my, my history with uh, being one of the guys who founded the iHub is, is allows me to look at this in a, in a bigger space. Definitely. I, I think that uh, what this represents is the example that, and there's been a couple others like this already, so we're not the first. There's yeah. a few companies that have raised $3 million plus into yeah. a, a, a technology startup in Kenya. And what that means is it signals something to the, uh, to the other investors who've been sitting on the sideline that there's something really interesting going on here, mm -hmm. and more companies who can show that they have a good technology and that they can, they can commercialize that will be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, more importantly, what we're looking for now is we need a company, uh, one of the tech companies in Kenya, to have an exit. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a serious exit uh, that will bring all the rest of the investors off the sideline. So all in, it's, it's, a good, it's, a, it's good news for the tech industry, mm -hmm. and I think it'll, it'll spur further growth. Interesting. Of course, um, the Ministry of ICT and... Uh, the watch of Joe Mushero will try to implement the laptop project. Perhaps, um, do you have, are you, are, are you part of the companies that did <laughs> actually make a bid? Yes, yeah, so, uh, you know, Kenyatta University, uh, ourselves, and GIT are one of the consortia, uh, and we uh, submitted our, our bid on Friday last yeah. week. And so, like everybody else, we will be waiting for uh, the results mm -hmm. of that tender, and I think we'll be finding out in early February, uh, but we'll, you know, once we find out, will uh, we'll then go into motion. And uh, I think, yeah, we have very good plans for it and we're very competitive. Because you are really watching your words. Well, you know, <laughs> any time you, t you deal with, uh, with government, you always have to be a little careful, right? <laughs> and so I, uh, we have great partners, we have great technology. Yeah. We are, we're the people who know how to do this kind of thing on the ground. Mm -hmm. There's, um, but at the end of the day, it's not up to us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's up to other people who, you know, have to go through and, and, and look at all the different parts of what they're trying to accomplish for the country. And at the end of the day, we will try and deliver um, what they're asking for. One of the big things that um, a lot of analysts are talking about in the ICT front is that it holds great prospects in 2016. Perhaps, I don't know, what's the case for you? Absolutely. So that's true. So, you know, I think you have to look at where we are in technology in Kenya uh, in context. So five, six years ago, there was very few startups. There's very little going on. Um, fast forward to three years ago, and there was starting to be real seed investment. Uh, last year, we saw, I think, 14 seed level investments of uh, around a million plus. And what that means is we're starting to see growth. And the big news is when we move from just having startups being funded, to growing startups into real companies. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, Brick Force represents this. You know, we're two years old. We're on our growth stage now. And uh, there's a couple other countries. Uh, I think like WeFarm is another one that also received a $3 million uh, funding round this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're, you're gonna start seeing companies like, like ours be the bellwethers for others to also get uh, you know, those same amounts of funding. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, it is on us to prove that we can do it. Um, you know, we're gonna, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot more pressure when the money comes, right? It's actually Definitely. it's easier before the money comes than oh after. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and so we're going to have uh, a lot of pressure on us this year for executing against our business plan. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm very excited. We have some uh, amazing people on the team. In fact, uh, you know, I feel like uh, the talent on the Brick team is one of the best in the country, both mm -hmm. technologically and, and operationally. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm very confident of us you know, building some of the best uh, Brick education type solutions that you can find in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we're already one of the few companies that does uh, wireless charging, in fact, the only one, uh, wireless charging of tablets for education. And uh, that's an innovation that came here from here in Kenya and is now being copycatted by people around the world. So uh -huh. again, Nairobi, uh, Kenya as a whole, is, is one of the major hubs for tech innovation in the world. And we're just proud to be one of the companies that is, uh, is, is doing the same thing. Nice place, nice place to end it. Of course, one tweet coming in asking how can people access this particular device, if you can wrap up by telling yeah, us. So it's actually very easy. Um, you go to our website, brick.com, and there's a shop button. And it, whether you're in Kenya, whether you're in Moldova, whether you're in the U.S., you mm -hmm. can buy it from there, and we can ship it to you. If you're in Nairobi, you can, you can actually come by our offices to pick it up. Many thanks. We've been speaking there to Eric Hausman with the Chief Executive Officer of BRIC, just giving us insights into what the ICT sector holds for 2016 
He's also known as, as the white African, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> Sometimes, unfortunately, <laughs> yes. But all in all, he's still Kenyan, and we do appreciate him.